Hey, it's BT with the BT Moto GP review. Let's get right to it. How great is it for Moto GP to be back? I don't know about you guys, but I was depressed. I had nothing going on. Formula One's okay, F1's okay, but nothing beats GP. It's like it's like that long lost love that you just can't wait to see, and she's still beautiful. Like, hey baby, and she's like, hey, you want something to eat? Anyway, let's get right to it. I'm gonna breeze over Moto Three and Moto Two. Um, Moto 3, Tony Arbolino, rider of the race. Let me tell you something, man. That little t Tiger Tony is great. I love this, the looks on that guy's face. He always makes these weird looks, and he, he's a funny-looking dude, but, man, that dude can ride. Let me tell you something. When that save he did, when he lost it in the grass, that save he did, he would have wiped out the entire field. They could have got ugly. I'm talking like Whoopi Goldberg ugly, but, man, he saved it. God bless him. Um, anyway, let's, um, the ride of the race goes to Tony Abelino, and, uh, heartbreak goes to John McBee, and John McBee, like I said, Moto3, that's a street fight, and you in a street fight, you always gotta keep your head on a swivel on what happened. He looked away for a second, bam, got cold cock, like, I didn't see that coming, check please. And that's what happened, man. I mean, it wasn't his fault, but that's just racing. He put himself where he had to be, but that's just racing. McBee will be back, and he'll be fighting for the championship with Arenas. Great for Arenas, great ride for Arenas. He's 2-0, and oh, baby. Watch out for Arenas. Um, anyway, let's move to Moto 2, Moto 2, Luca Marini. That was, if the symphony, if Beethoven was in Moto 2, that was Beethoven. What Luca Marini did was beautiful. It, it was Nothing was wrong. He was he just rode so yeah, that was beautiful. But ride of the race in Moto Two goes to Stefano Manzi. He started twenty third and finished eleventh. What? I don't know how many places that is because I'm not good at math. But that's incredible what he did. So Stefano Manzi ride of the race. The heartbreak goes to uh, Bezeki, uh, not for his afro, which is kind of all over the place. But it's because he low sided. Um, He'll be back. Good, uh, Baseki. He's getting. He's, he's coming into Moto Two. Good for him. So ride the race. Stefano Manzi. Uh, heartbreak goes to Baseki. Moto GP. Wow. First of all, what I want to say is, why did Maverick and Rossi go with the soft front? Who are you listening to? You ever, you ever have that like dude who has a girlfriend nobody really likes, and she tells him something, and he shows up. I don't know, and like bell bottom jeans. You go, what are you doing? My girlfriend said like everybody's wearing these. No, they're not. It's 2020. What are you doing? That's what he did. He showed up with bell bottoms at a party in the 80s. And you go, oh, no. Um, I knew it was going to happen. But the whole, he got the whole shot device. And he finally got a whole shot. So Maverick starts are better already. Matter of fact, they owe Ducati for that. They, everybody's copying off Ducati. Ducati. Everybody is like, on, you remember that show Tool Time with Tim Allen and the neighbor that had the little eyes. And I would, would peek over the fence like, hey, what you guys doing? That's what, that's what everybody is like. Hey, Ducati, is that a whole shot device? Hey, what else you got there? Hey, does that, does that help the bike with, uh, raise up in height as you enter a turn? I mean, come on, man. Everybody's ripping off Ducati. But anyway, great for Maverick. Um, be honest, be, I had him for the win, and I thought he would give Fabio more of a race. I really did. He gave, he gave Marquez a bit of a race, and I'll get to Marquez in a minute, but I was a little bit disappointed in Maverick. Got me. Second is great, and he, still, he could still win the championship. He's going to grow in confidence, but still, I kind of thought he could have gave Fabio a better race. And anyway, so let's go to Marquez. What Marquez did, the first the first save, the save well, the only save, <laughs> this first save on his elbow, that anybody else, that would have been done. And the fact that he saved it, and then he flat-tracked it, and got him back onto the racetrack. The only thing he didn't do was my taxes, which were done last week. That's the only thing he didn't do, because he did everything to keep that bike upright, and he did. And I was like, wow. Um, he came from 16th to 3rd. He's my rider of the race. I don't care what you guys say. I don't care what you say. He's my rider of the race because he came from 16th to 3rd with the greatest riders in the world. He carved them up like it was Thanksgiving Day at a soup kitchen where you got to cut little pieces and give them to everybody. That's what he did. Hey, I got smallpox, but that's what he did. That was incredible. He passed every even Miguel. Remember Miguel Oliveira was like, "Hey man, after you." He didn't even try to race. The only one who tried to race him was Jack Miller, and Miller had a good race. But still, what Marquez did was incredible. He and you can say what you want to say. He was going for that win. He was on Mavericks, but and I think he was was he four seconds, three four seconds down from from Fabio, and then he hit the high side. And they say he might have nerve damage in his arm. And we. Pray to whoever you pray to, if you pray or whatever. Send him good thoughts, good positive vibe thoughts. Because no matter what you think of Marquez, he is the straw that stirs the drink. Even though everybody loves Fabio. Now, everybody loves Fabio. 
because he's a new kid on the block and you can't help but love Fabio. I love him too. But at the same time, Marquez is a straw that stirs that drink in MotoGP. Love him or hate him, you watch him. They should have just Marquez Cam is what they should do because, man, you don't know what that guy's going to do. Seriously. I mean, you don't know if he's going to pull a rabbit out of his hat literally or do a wee. I mean, and also, side note, I'm getting frustrated with MotoGP when during a race they'll replay the start I don't want to see the start again, or they'll go to Simon, and, and I love Simon, but they'll go to Simon during the race, he's trying to interview him, they can't hear him, he's got the mask on, the, the bikes are passing, it's it's just frustrating. So I wish they would just keep, keep it on the race, on the race you're watching, like the first or second, whatever. And I know for sponsors, you got to show the other right, the other riders, but still, it's so frustrating with the director, whoever is over the shots, that's very frustrating anyway. Um, almost, run a rough ride of the race goes to... Um, goes to Divisioso. What Divisioso did, he did what champions do, right? He's never got a podium at Jerez, and he did it because he knows, right? He limited the damage, and that was brilliant by Divisioso. Even with a broken collarbone, and it's hot. It was so hot. Remember when he uh, came into the pits, he was going in Park Ferme, and Simon was like, hey, what was it like out there, Dobie? And Dobie just said, and he was drained. He goes, it's hot, man. What do you think? It's hot, bro. I mean, the look on his face. And he's the like I said, the best riders in the world. And I mean, I fell for those guys. But Dovi, right now, you know, there's talk that uh, there's talk that Ducati talking to Lorenzo, and, and Dovi might take a year off. He didn't get what he wanted. If I was Dovi, I'd walk into the Ducati offices right now with Gigi's there, and I'd pull a Cooper Gooden Jr. and I'd go, "Hey, show me the money." Hey, oh, I'll pull a Jerry Maguire, man, because he's he's playing with house money now. He got points at a, he got a, a podium at a race. He really was supposed to get a podium on, and and the, and the bike wasn't doing that well. And, you know, they signed Jack. Jack's great. They signed Jack. But DBC also is still doing his thuggy thizzle. So good for him. And when they go to Austria, look at my face. When they go to Austria, look at my face. When they go to Austria, come on now. So with Marquez gone, and if Marquez comes back, let me tell you something. And I really don't want Marquez to come back. I mean, because the way I look at it is like this. Um, why? I mean, 13 races, just heal up, come back next year. But it, and Marquez is not going to take it easy. He don't know the word. He don't. He, he doesn't know the word compromise. Or, hey man, just slow down. He doesn't know that. And it's good for us. But I want the guy to race for a long time. I want to see it. And if he comes back and he gets injured again, he know what Marquez is going to push it. He's going to hurt his arm. I mean, such is racing. But still, but he's not going to do that. But and you got to consider even if he comes, even if he comes back for the fourth race, he's going to be down at least a hundred points, eighty points. I mean. He could pull it off. It's Marquez. He could pull it off. If anybody can pull off, Marquez could. But why? I mean, I think it. And honestly, I think it'd be a better championship if he wasn't there because now it'd be more of a Dovi, Maverick, Fabio run. And I think, and I don't know if Dovi can win it. I, I mean, I think he can outsmart him. But I, if that was the case, I still have Maverick for the the championship, which is weird. I have, I have Maverick for the championship. But anyway, I thought it was great racing. Um, uh, the Rossi situation, you know, it's the same old story. The rear wheel spin, it's 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 you know on, on the hot track and this and that. And even though the bike did break down, you know, it's like if I was Patronus, I hate to say it, but I don't think I even want him on the team. I'd be like, hey man, you know, I need to pluck somebody from Moto Two. I mean, why do I get? I mean, it's like it's almost it's like it's like that hot chick who's like she's hot, but like you know she get a little older and she's kind of bitchy and. <laughs> And she has a lot of baggage, but she's single. And your friends are like, hey, man, you want to go out with her? And you're like, eh, not really. I mean, you know what I mean? That's what it's like. It's like, is it really worth it? You'd rather have somebody young and somebody newer so you can mold them instead of having somebody who's, and it's just admit it, man. I hate to say it. And I love Rossi, but, you know, mm, mm. I hope he proves me wrong. I really hope he proves me wrong, but let's just be honest here. So, anyway, that's the Rossi situation. And you know, who would think that it's the other Marquez now that that Repsol Honda has to depend on the other Marquez? You know, it's like, it's like, it's like you being a kid and your dad leaves and your mom going, "Hey, you're the breadwinner. You're the breadwinner of the family." And you're like, "Huh?" But I'm 12. I don't give a shit. You're the breadwinner. So go get a job. I'm 12. I know. Go get a job. You're 12. You need money. That's what it's like. It's like it's like Alex is like, ah, so in the vato. We don't care. Do what you got to do, bro. But you're the breadwinner. So Alex Marquez now is the King Marquez at HRC, which I think is funny. At least he will be for the next three weeks, I'm thinking. So anyway, MotoGP's back. It's going to be interesting to see what happens next week. Um, 
it, it's just great, right? It's the greatest sport on earth. And I mean it from the bottom of the greatest sport on earth. Nothing can rival MotoGP. Nothing. Um, so anyway, uh, I'm rambling. And before I get out of here, I know this is like a non sequitur, but watch out. And even though Brad Bender did a great job, and I think he and Alex Marquez are going to buy for Rookie of the Year. It's going to be a great fight for Rookie of the Year. Watch Zarco on that Ducati. When Zarco get watch Zarco on that Ducati for the end of the year, man, he's watch Zarco, watch Zarco. Anyway, so uh, ride of the race, Marquez, heartbreak. I'm gonna go with Marquez, seriously, I'm Marquez, Marquez. I mean, and I hope he's gonna be okay. So, anyway, this one was I know it was a little weird, a little bit longer, but anyway, it's the first race of the year. I'm just so happy uh, that uh, GP is back, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, so. Interesting. Oh, that was nasty. Interesting to see what happens the rest of the year. See what happens in Marquez. Hope it's going to be okay. But if you're going for the championship, I got to say, I still like Vinales. I like Vinales and Doby to get it on. But like I said, it's early. So anyway, it's over. Leave a comment, whatever. If you like it, you hated it. I don't give a damn. I'm just glad you guys were watching. So anyway, it's BT, MotoGP Review, Hooray. Until next week. Bye.